You are now listening to For All Nerds Show, a podcast about geek and pop culture from the perspective of people of color. For All Nerds is hosted by DJ Ben Amin and Tatiana Keene Jones. For All Nerds Show is a member of the Loudspeakers Network, where we always say rest in peace to our founder, Combat Jack. For All Nerds Show is powered by our listeners. Everything we do from our podcasts, live events, our website are all independently funded. Please continue to support us through our Patreon page at patreon.com slash for all nerds. Welcome to the Fan Bros, the show where the bros are fans. Doodle. And what's up, y'all? And welcome. A very extremely special episode of the For All Nerd Show, the voice of the Urban Geek, the podcast where we discuss geek and pop culture from the perspective of people of color. And as always, in the captain's chair, it's your boy DJ Ben Amin, aka NBA Young Boy, never blipped again. Ben I mean DJ by night, Briss Blairmont, Halal Jordan, Cal L. Bundy, Black the King, Kirby, Thought Pilgrim, Lion O. Richie, De La Troll, here in the spaceship tonight. And as always, I'm joined by my braided up, shining, looking good co-host. Thank you very much, sir. Tatiana King, the Grand Duchess of Tech, also known as Glorilla Grod, Flex. <laughs> Luthor, Lambo Calrissian, Doctor doing something strange for some change, Miles Tails the Prowler, the Ting of the North, Four Swords and Seven Years Ago, the Little Mermaid, and... <laughs> did, did I give you that one or did you no, I got that to the first <laughs> Gucci Mane DeLorean. There it is. There it like is. Like your amazing shirt that you have on right the fuck now. Y'all make sure you are at 4 to get the beautiful merch that we are wearing. Ben I mean is wearing the exclusive Gucci Mandalorian in yellow flavor. I am wearing my anti-scroll social club shirt in the black and green flavor. We all these shirts also come in different colors. Um mm-hmm. And mine features like a puff print. So I know I'm like just rubbing on my chest right now. Everybody run to YouTube and watch me. But um, yeah, it's like it, it feels really nice. It's great. Um, and yes, when you hit us up and, and purchase this merch, you are supporting us directly as black people in America. We appreciate that. This is our own merch store. So again, brownerds.com. Thank you. Word app, as they say in these uh, internet streets. But yeah, we're back. This is a very special episode. I know that people, you know, were wondering what happened to views from the 616 last said, what week. What happened to episode, what was this, three? What happened to, well, last week? What happened to episode three? Yeah, because, you know, we've been reviewing uh, Nick Fury's adventures for the last few weeks. And then last week, we just didn't. And so I know some people might have been like, yo, what's up? You know, y'all just don't leave us hanging. And no, of course, we're not going to leave you hanging. But we've had to take a step back, as they say. This is the tenth year. Anyway, up real quick. You know, what I mean, the tenth year of For All Nerds show, formerly known as that other show, and yeah, it's a lot sometimes. One, that's just off the break. You know, doing this show every week can be a bit stressful. As much as I love doing it, I know as much as Tatiana loves doing it, there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. You know, we recently started doing these shirts and everything, this merch ourselves, you know, no longer at that other site. You know, shout out to our business partner, Kev, and Gifted Apparel, but it's been a lot of work doing that. You know what I mean? So that's one thing. And then on another note, there is the WGA, the Writers Guild of America strike, which is going on right now. If you follow me on Twitter, you see my profile picture is, you know, supporting the WGA. I've been doing everything I can to support them. And, and I've been sharing a lot of content and information from lots of folks in the know. WA and all the strike, all everything happening with the strike, I've been sharing on a regular basis. Yes. And it obviously affects both of us, you know, directly as creatives and everything. And we are also on the other side of the fence where we are journalists to a degree, where we're, you know, historians, we're all talking about everything this Media pop and geek culture. Yeah, you know, all that. And so we're like working at the behest or, you know, in conjunction with these 
giant with corporations. Ops. With the ops. <laughs> with the ops. So, yeah, you know, we are working for the ops, you know, in a lot mm -hmm. of cases. You know, shout outs to Disney. We love y'all. But, you know, they ain't paying these people. You know, Disney just did this. I mean, even Secret Invasion, y'all, like the intro was done by AI. Sure, there was somebody. As who, ugly as fuck. I mean, a lot of intros are to me, but that's beside the point. Like, you know, some people are sitting there. Someone typed that script in, you know, it's like, yo, give us this ugly ass intro. Yeah, this prompt. But still, a lot less workers were involved now. A lot less more people are out of work because mm. of that. And this is the same time when writers are on strike that they choose to do this. So it's just really just like, we don't give a fuck. And that's been one of my big issues with this strike is that a lot of people, and I understand why, don't give a fuck. And as time moves on and as it goes on, less and less people will give because yeah, people got other things to worry about. The news is always giving you something else to worry about. The cycle keeps moving. How long? So right now, been? it's uh, going How on many the uh, going on like three. It's eighty seventh day. I, I want to say. I look it up. Yeah. So right now, the big thing that's in the news is the Actors Guild might go on strike, joining them because everyone is having issues with these ops right now with these big corporations. So everyone's trying to figure it out, what's going to happen with AI, all these other issues that are coming up. The fact that writers in general, I mean, with the writers deal, there's just so many issues, the way the system's being run. It's just very difficult for <laughs> anyone to come up from the bottom to make it to the top, even once you get in the door. And it used to not be like that, but now it's very tough. Mm -hmm. So, And I mean, getting in Extremely. the door is damn near impossible. So once Extremely. you even get in the door... And and people like yourself and Melo literally had a once in a lifetime opportunity of how you yes. guys got in the door. That's not normal the way no. your story and, and you know I won't go into the weeds on that. But the point is, it's not it's not easy on a regular day. And y'all went through like the catacombs of what the possibilities could have been for you guys to become writers. So yeah, and through that you learn how difficult it is in the industry, and so that's why. I mean, I'm so for this writer's strike. And so that's why it's a problem because we're sitting here promoting these shows, promoting these streaming services that are making all these millions, all these billions, and will not pay these people who are allowing them to make all this money. Yeah. So it becomes this fucking conundrum because it's like, I want to watch Secret Invasion. You know, I'm interested in it. I love the MCU. I love Marvel in general. So I want to watch it. Yeah, I know I mean, people who worked on a lot of these shows for that matter. So it's like, I want to support them. Yeah. I could say it's a catch-22 because mm -hmm. you want to support them. And also, all this stuff is pre predates the strike. Yeah. So it's being released now. You're seeing it now. But this this has been in, in the just in, in terms of being written, shot, edited, mm -hmm. whatever. It's all It's been done. They just press play and have it on Disney+. Plus. And, of course, just wanted to update. The strike has been going on for two months, one week, and three days. Yeah. Okay. So with that, that's where we've run into this issue. And then at the same time, we also just had to take a step back and be like, look, you know, do, how are we doing this? Are we, do we have to sit here and do these reviews? Reviews are a dime a dozen on the net. You know, let's be honest. And at this point, even from people of color, they're becoming a dime a dozen. I don't think anyone does it like us. No. But I also think our energy can be put to doing things a different and better way because better. I don't think anyone does it like us in general. Mm -hmm. so yeah and and also it's well because we're speaking like candidly to everyone's listening just about mm -hmm. the monotony of it right like kind of oh doing, my god kind of run treadmill running right like yeah it's it's and 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 in one way it's like okay it's a comfort zone for a lot of people and us sometimes it's like you know what to expect you know how mm -hmm. we're gonna do it okay great you know how we're how it's gonna go but then it's also like but it's always the same thing all the time right <sighs> And sure, you can say, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But it's also just like, but what if I get broke? Because mm. I'm still doing stuff the same way and not finding as much joy as I normally would, right? So what we have been talking about is different ways we can present our views of these shows and, and still talk about it, still do reviews, but maybe not in the same exact format, a different way. So that's why we're, we took a step back and was like, okay, how can we go about this? And we're, we're actually going to be trying a lot of different things to do it. You're going to see more things like videos from, from us, especially me. And <laughs> yeah, and, and, and yeah, we talked about that. So <laughs> you're going to be seeing a lot more, but you know, also it's just like, you're not, we're not going to stop podcasting. It's also just like 
what can we do better, right? And we often ask everyone who listens, like, what do you want? How do you want to hear it from us? I know you like us and our viewpoint and how we deliver. That's fine. But, like, is there a different and better way that, that you know, you would find enjoyable? We have have our own ideas, and we're probably going to implement some of that. But we're also curious as to what everyone listening thinks. Yes, for real. Because we, like, doing a 40-minute review of a show like Secret Invasion, which this week was, like, 20-something minutes. Sam... First of all, it was wild short, and I was just like, like I was, it was a little bit uh, jarring. I said, "Oh, that's it. Okay, great." Yeah. Uh, but also, this show has been a bit slow for me. It's bit, it's me been as well. a bit boring on the uptake. I told Ben, I mean, the last episode I fell asleep on, and I wasn't tired, so I don't know what that means in this grand scheme of things. But that's how I felt. This this week's episode, what episode four? Uh, was cool. That's cool. That's cool. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> now everything you say, I fully agree with you. Like, I think this show has had some things that it's done well. Like, this week, I really enjoyed the conversation between Nick and his wife. I yes, wish, that was actually really good. Yeah, I wish that could have gone on a little bit longer and we had less of some of the ham handedness of. Once again, Talos, you know, like singing and dancing for Massa out here. Like, right? It's so. St- oh my God. Like, is Talos a coon? Like, I don't understand. It, it no, was... not a coon. What's the word? He is. Assimilationist? Oh, no, no, no. In the boondocks, what's the guy that talks like Uncle this? Ruckus. And he got his eye. Uncle Ruckus. Is he the Uncle that's a, Ruckus that's a coon. of. Okay, maybe he's a coon. Is, is he <laughs> the Uncle Ruckus of Secret Major? And the only reason I say that is because. And yes, y'all, we're talking about Secret Invasion right now. We're going to talk about this episode real quick. And just what we've seen thus far. Because the man, and like you said, tap dancing, like, he really believed in humanity. Like, oh, they're going to see our heart, nigga. They're going to understand that we're here for them. And I look like, the way his daughter looked at him, I said, nigga, they don't care about you. What what did did Michael Jackson say? All I want to say is that (laughs) they don't really care about us. We don't care, Talos. And them it, niggas don't really care. And yes, will there be people who will see your point of view and try to help you? Yes, in typical Disney fashion. Sure. After half of y'all niggas is dead. Uh, shout out to my man, Wellburn, who thinks the show we were talking about it earlier today, and he thinks the show is going to end with the president giving the speech. Strolls are cool, basically. You know, he like, saved my life. Like, yep, there it is. He, he yeah. literally said, and I, honestly, I felt very... Very stereotypical Malcolm X when he said that shit. Because when he was just like, if if we just, oh, he said, if we just chip in and do our part, they'll see our heart. I said, nigga, grab a gun and shoot. What are you talking about? That's when I <laughs> when I said earlier in our review when I'm like, I fuck with graphic. I'm like, all that rah rah don't mean shit to me. That's not you. Not about that action. You and- about that slow change, which is sometimes necessary. I get it, but and maybe no. as a as a black American person. Yeah. Knowing the history of what I know and also my personality combined with that, I'm like, fuck that piece of shit, bro. You are a scroll. You got fucking superpowers off rip. And that's before you're a super scroll. Fucking use that shit. You my know how thing, shit I would get into? My God. See, that's my thing. My problem with this whole thing is like, Gravik is way too, they're both way too extreme. Like, Talos yes. is way too much of a sucker. Correct. And, and Gravik is, a, yes. is way too much of a monster. Of a terrorist. <laughs> yeah, because all, like, they, like, Gravik won already. The nigga got Chernobyl. You can go live there. Nobody's going to come fuck with you in an eradicated place. You could have just lived there and just sh- shut the and fuck then, up. And then, okay, you can show your scroll face all you want. And then whenever you want, you can go out into society and live it up, nigga. I'm Drake like, in the club. who's going to stop you? Who going to check you, boo? That's what I'm saying. I'm showing up the club as Drake and his 20 goons. You know what I mean? And niggas is letting me in, giving me bottles. I'm living it up that night, and then I'm going back to Chernobyl. I so I do agree with you. Like even though I like Ravik's energy, it's too much. It's, it's way too much. Too it's ridiculous. Much. And, and, and then that's the Taylor, problem. On the other hand, he's he's too soft to me. And that's way the problem because it's like you have this. That's why the show to me it's like it struggles to keep my interest because Ravik is just all the way wrong. There's <laughs> no way I can say, oh yeah, okay, I can see that. Like I say, once you start talking about nuking dogs, you lost me, fam. So, yeah. 
I can't really agree dogs with him. Dogs like like the four legged animal. Yeah, dogs. Uh. like straight up like dogs. Like you knew dogs. Like, you cannot touch my dog. <laughs> no, you can't touch dogs. Like what have yeah, they you done can't to you? Do that. You know what I mean? You can't touch birds. Like there's a lot of things in nature that I just like. No, you can't nuke them. I really like the birds. <laughs> trees, dog. You can't be out here nuking trees, dog. No, no, I can't. But I get it. That's how. They, no, and I can't imagine that's how his planet is either. But whatever. Beside the point, right? It's just made his shit don't make no sense. And because of that, I can't really get with it. This whole Fury is tired and wash thing is like getting boring. We know he's not gonna be that tired or wash where he's gonna get murked. And then it's just like graphic this episode has the super scroll powers, but for some reason doesn't just unleash them all and kill the president. He he used arguably one of the weakest powers, at least I in mean, that situation. Also, yeah, not weak. But- Overall, yeah. but the weakest in that situation. Like yeah. he did a little group razzle dazzle, and then yeah. that was it. And I'm like, you could have wiped them off the face of the earth. But just group razzle dazzle, like, wh- and you could have done that with group. Yes, yeah. but like, who else? He has the Exogen Project. He has group. He has some other extremists. Extremists, excuse me, extremists. Yeah. Some other stuff. He got the on. he got the um Thanos's kid, the big giant strong one, and he got some ice giant shit or something. Right, he's a frost giant. Yeah, He's a so he could have froze them niggas up. Yodenheim, yeah, I, I just want to go back real quick to what the what I really did like when that conversation between Nick Fury and his wife. Do you think? And this is just a offhand question. Do you think for all the years that this scroll has assumed the life of this black woman that she was able to understand and adopt what it means to be black? Yes. Like she understood, like when they were talking, I was, she was giving me like, I was just like, you know, just certain things just as, and I'm like black Americans particularly, but black people that we just inherently know by just by virtue of living with each other, socializing, all that other stuff. And there's a, there's a cadence of blackness that can't be taught. Right. Mm -hmm. Was she able to pick up on that? Was she giving you that? A little bit. Yeah, she was a little, like, like, like she understood the code. Like I don't. Yeah, I felt like she, yeah. I felt that, but I did. And, and that's what my whole problem with Talos is, because Talos clearly understands the code of the streets. He understands that race is an issue in this world, and yet he's like, oh, you know, but these shapeshifters will be adopted, <laughs> nigga. What? So yeah, I feel like she fully <laughs> understands. You know, I think her choosing to be a black woman and going under that, you know, pressure is part of it. Like. Another one, the straw who's playing roads. The you know, I guess the woman. It's a know, woman. Yeah, That's who's playing straw. Like she was stressed. She was like, "Fuck, I gotta put on this roads face again and go out and run these fucking people." And this, you know, and I'm a nigger. You know what I mean? Like, was she stressed because she was a nigger? Like, I mean, wouldn't you be like, imagine, you know, like if you gotta go be a black person in America, you know what I mean? And you're Ooh. not. Yeah, it's a, it's a load, dog. It ain't like you know, like if you're not, and then you got to be. That's, you know, that's stress. I would play... When you could just rip people's heads off. To, imagine that to your oh, scroll. Oh, yeah, that too. You could just, like, slap these niggas across the room and invite people looking crazy at you because, you know, you walk in the room. Gravik was punching bulletproof glass to get the president out of... With no problem. And he was already fucked up. The car. Like, fucked and up, he was on, fucked one, up. Like, on one like, hand. Like, reverting. Reverting yeah. like humidity hits natural hair. Yeah. Reverting. <laughs> And it was like a Hollywood shuffle when a nigga took his Jerry curl activator away from him. <laughs> please, 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 just give me back my activator. And you have not seen Hollywood shuffle, have you? I have. I watched okay. it years ago when you you, you when, were I, when I when I like, watch it. Yeah. You shook yeah. me to watch it, so I did. Well, yeah. But okay, well yeah, yeah, I know. Well, the dude, you know, he has Jerry curl and it's all pristine, and that shit <laughs> is one of the funniest shots in movie history because it's like Robert Townsend has his activator and. uh Keenan Ivory Wayne's playing to do it in his so his Jerry Curl's pure pastry and early. Up. Yes, but it's in every shot they cut back to Robert, and then when they cut back to Keenan, it's worse. It's worse and worse and worse. <laughs> it's bigger and bigger. No, it's like more afro and more and more afro. <laughs> well, that's what Gravik was doing when he got shot in the arm, shoulder, Talos, whatever. Yeah. Oh, Talos, thank you. Yeah. Whatever the fuck. And then, you know, and that's when I'm like. I'm like, that's so naive and unnecessary to be so soft as Talos because I'm like, in the fuck, in the same fucking fight where a moment ago you were shooting at Gravik, Gravik can assume the view, the, Gravik can assume the personhood of a random shoulder that's on your side and infiltrate. Yep. It was seconds. I forgot the nigga was not over there no more. I, if, yep. I'm sure if I watched that scene back, 
I will see when he walked over and changed and shapeshifted. That power. That's why I said that was me. Yeah. Me, nigga. Yeah. No, you can't. You, you, there's no way humanity is going to accept that. Like, I, I get it. The MCU humanity has been through a lot of shit. But no. No, fam. You could be anyone. No, no. Instantly. No, no. And then not be, you know? <laughs> like, and then not be, right. Yeah. Drake run up, slap some woman on the street. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the deep fake in real life. Oh, my God. It's, like, the worst that's deep what's, fake ever. That's what's crazy about it because people is getting hemmed up by deep fakes online. Yeah. Imagine that in real life, instantaneous at any given point. That's your neighbor. Any not point you ever that, wanted to that shoot, makes bro. them bad, but Instantly. that is the mentality that... And people don't like people that look right, like just like them. So what makes no. you think they're gonna like you as a scroll? Fam, like yes, I said, that's a negative viewpoint. But I'm just being fucking real. Let's be realistic. You could, no, that's how it Kalos. is. You could, you could ruin anyone's life instantly. You know, sex tapes could slapping people on the street. <laughs> you you love to slap people. I can see what you're gonna do when you're a scroll. <laughs> Come on, yeah. like can you just imagine, like you know, Union Square, Drake runs up out of the subway. <laughs> Because you know someone's going to have it on, on recording. Yes. And then exactly. I seen it and I yeah. got the receipts. You got, it, got it on camera. Drake wrote it up just pow. And think it's like I was in Turks. Best I ever had out. and then runs off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but even like even as you and I speaking on this from a vacuum. like uh, And again, from, a, from the real world perspective, we're also speaking very stereotypically and negatively about it. Like, And we're speaking in hypotheticals. What makes y'all think that this is going to work? If any president, Obama couldn't convince me of that one. If he was like, yo, a million scrolls coming through, fam. I'm like, all right, Obama. Get the fuck out of here, Barry, man. I guess I ain't voting for your ass this time. Like, I I, I messed with you, dog, but nah, Barry, I can't get with Mm -mm, you. Nah, fam, I cannot. That's a little wild, bro. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's a little next level. And, And I'm saying, like, just us. In a hypothetical or having a hard, even jokes, we're having a hard time accepting that. What makes Talos think? With all they know. <laughs> That's why he did now. Like, you understand the black experience, but you don't understand that you're not going to be accepted, no matter how much good you do. Will there be people who fuck with you, rock with you? Sure. Is it going to be enough? All right. I've got two questions so we can get out of this, to keep this as short and sweet as possible. One, is Talos dead? No. What? I no, don't nigga, know how it's gonna happen. They can't do the they fake out pull, twice. They gonna they gonna do him like they did. Uh, what's the nigga? <laughs> what's his name? Um, that was in Walking Dead that got free and he shouldn't have made it. Glenn. They gonna Glenn that nigga. I'm no. telling you. Cause they already Glenned Dia. They didn't Glenn, and that's what. Okay, let's go back to that real quick because you and I spoke offline about this. Yeah. I. T- told you over and over she was not dead. I pretty much figured too, and I just I just accepted it was terrible. <laughs> but you know, I I, I, I will give them credit. That. I didn't know it's because she, you know. Yeah, they, I will give they, them credit. They, they that that, that she got super soldier. I mean, yeah, that made soul, sense. But... I'll give them. I'll give them the credit but for I that. I told you that was happening. Yeah. Now Talos has no access to that machine. You don't know what's happening though. That man is dead. If he ain't dead, I'm like, no, this. All right. Anyway, second question: How long has Rhodes been a scroll? All his life. <laughs> That's why he's a coon. <laughs> My thing is though, that's like you can tell. No, see, wait. That's why he didn't understand blackness. So when my man said, "Give me back my roadie," Rhodes was just like, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> <laughs> but my thing is like the longest. Say for example, he has been a scroll for like that's, years that's what and you years. Say to a black man, right? But say he has been a scroll for like years and years. <laughs> Where's the real roadie? And what does the real roadie <laughs> act like? He did. If, it, if, if it's been years and years, he did. Is he dead so, or is he just locked up in, in like... <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? No, for real. Like, like, is he, or is he in stasis like these other niggas right, so that are like, in the basement let's, let's in Let's talk about it. Like, is this after Endgame? Like, it's been a few years since Endgame now. Wait, so we're going with the assumption that perhaps Rhodey has been a scroll for years. I'm, that's what I'm saying. We're talking like, about 5 plus, if, 10 plus. If it's 5 plus, you're five plus. going, bef- you know, during the blip at some point, he or got replaced. Blip. Yeah. No, like during, during the those five he years, got yeah, yeah. he got replaced. Yeah. yeah. And so that means the roadie we saw in Endgame was a scroll. Ben, that's actually a huge opening for scrolls in general. Like the blip happened and they just assumed doop, the doop. identity of half of Earth. 
but they but they also couldn't because the niggas got blips. You know, you couldn't be like, yo, I'm I'm replacing this nigga, you know what I mean, when he got snapped. That's what I'm saying. When because half the scrolls got snapped too, one. Well, okay, I forgot. All the yeah. so you're right. I'm <laughs> so, sorry, I forgot. And then they couldn't really jump into the place of somebody because people knew that person got snapped for the most part. Right, right, right. You're right, you're right, you're right. I, yeah. I, I forgot it was about I was thinking about humans only. No, it was oh, yeah, all no. living things. All living things caught it. So them niggas were sitting around wherever they was, and it was just like, fuck! You know, just like the rest <laughs> of us. Like, they all was, in, you know, Drake, once again, was about to slap somebody, and that Yo, nigga got If I got a baby faded, <laughs> it would be like this. Peace sign, and I'd be out, fade out like that boy. I would absolutely fade out like I'll that. I'll tell you, Drake was running up the subway stairs, and poof. What is your infatuation <laughs> with Drake slapping people? Like, in that Union, is your in, in Union Square, it just, you know, it has to be Union <laughs> all Square. places. Yeah, wow. uh, okay, so yeah, the, the one assumption is he's been a scroll for years. Like we're I talking don't think five so. plus. I don't the think other so. assumption is for a sh- relatively shorter period of time. Yes, he's been a scroll, and I'm leaning more on that way just because, like, it makes no e- sense. Even when he, it don't make no sense. But also, even when he was talking to Fury, I was, I was, I didn't automatically think scroll, but I was like, he's talking kind of funny. Like, why is he mm-hmm. so aggy? It was just me just saying, why is he so aggy? Like, I understand that he has a job and he's. He's he's fed and all this now, but he's too aggy for my taste. Even as a former Avenger, like I don't, you, t- you, you he he's moving too funny styles for me. But like, hey, there's another question, right? She said, uh, "Fury's wife said that their whole marriage was her trying to get close to get close to this dude." Yes. So how long have they been married? Fury and his wife. Yeah, didn't they show what was that? The nineties when they that flashback. Well, they met in like the nineties because he was young, Fury. It yeah. was he, the way he looked in the um in the Miss Marvel movie. That was that Fury that got. But then when they the met to start hollering, I think they showed twenty twelve. I'd have to check. That. Oh that yeah. Was, oh, when they show because he has the uh, the leather on. Yeah, that was like, like last week. He's when Nick they Fury sh- Prime. Yeah, when they showed him. No, I mean that was. Oh, that was even more recent. That, but that was even saying. that was this week when he that that was yeah. after the Avengers. Yeah. Movie, after the first Avengers, so they've known yeah. each other at least since the first Avengers. So before. Before yeah, that, before yes. that. Yeah, before that. I mean, obviously before that, but like they've been hollering since around the first Avengers, right? Yes, I think yeah. so. That's I, for the, at the very least. So that means Rose could have been a stroll for a long time too. And that's why I'm like, we, I mean, we can't discount it. That that that, yeah. like, that could be a thing. I wonder. And then, but that goes back to what I said. Well, if that's the case, is the real Rhodes alive or is he? He like, shouldn't you, be. You say he did, but I mean, if it's been years, fam, come on. Ain't no way they keeping somebody alive for years. I've seen it done. On, on for movies. what though? Like, yeah, I know, but it's just. And then that mean that means, why is Gravik so damn aggy would, over the world? Like, what would Armor Wars be about then? Like, Rhodes would have no connection to anything. Yeah, and that's why that might not work either. Yeah, because he would not know any of these people then. You know what I mean? Like, if he's been out of it since before, what since Terrence Howard? <laughs> Is that when the scroll started? Is that, you know? <laughs> Not only did Terrence Howard get pruned, he got replaced Face and then the replacement scroll. got scrolled. <laughs> Immediately. I think I think when uh, when when Don Cheadle walks in and tells him deal with it, that I'm here to deal with it, the first introduction, I think he's a scroll from there. That's my working that's theory. That's years been I'm yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> that's my working theory. From the first moment we ever saw Don Cheadle He's been a scroll. <laughs> Which would be I mean, fucking hilarious. That's the beauty of like a Deus Ex Machina, like a, like scrolls, right? Like, uh, it's the same thing as the multiverse. It's like you can retcon anything. Yeah, it doesn't work though. In the comic books, when the secret invasion in the comic books happened, uh, Frank, uh, not Franklin, uh, what's Johnny Storm? Johnny Storm, uh, the Human Torch was married I was like, to Snowfall. <laughs> No, because uh, Reed and Sue's son is Franklin. Okay. Yeah. So Johnny Storm was married to a woman, Alicia Masters. Alicia used to be the thing's girlfriend, and then That's they a broke up. That's name. Alicia Masters. I never thought about it like that, but true. Think about it. <laughs> yeah, it is. So Alicia Masters is married to Johnny Storm <laughs> for like 100 issues or something until Secret Invasion happens, and then the retcon comes in that she has been a scroll this whole fucking time. But when you go back and read those hundred issues or so, it works in some instances, but in some, it's like, well, this woman's a scroll right here. There's no way she would have done this, you know? Yeah. 
So yeah. it just doesn't work all the way through. Yeah. And just like doesn't curl make, over all the you know. Yeah, and if you make Rose is, not hitting. If if Rose has been a scroll since Don Cheeto's introduction, as hilarious it was it would be, it would, does not make sense. No. At all. Oh, fucking up, bro. But um, I don't think much of this show does either, so no. we'll see what happens. But and was, I, and again, the shortness of this episode irritated me. I mean, we only got two left. I mean, and, and I can't say, like, people's like, well, you fell asleep in the last one. What does it matter if it was long? I'm like, because I'm waiting for some fucking substance, and I thought I had more time. It's like, oh, we shot Talos, end scene, and roll credits, and roll 10 minutes worth of credits, because you need credits for every language that the show is streamed in. Yeah. So, that's the other part. Because if you look at, like, the scrub bar, that's the timeline, there's a lot. a lot of extra, like, show left. So, I'm like, all right. Even the ending of this one, it was like there was music playing on the black screen, and I was like, "Okay, there's gonna be another." S- oh no, credits. Okay, all right. Yeah, bro. and I we sc- I scrubbed forward just in case, you know, sometimes I'm like, "Oh, maybe they'll they'll do something nah. for me." No, no, nah, nah, that's it. So I'm I don't know what's happening. I know what's happening, and I just don't care. I'm talking about with the structure of this series. Oh yeah, yeah. No, we'll see. Like I like we'd like to say on the show, we like to finish and then we'll judge. So we got two more episodes. Maybe they're gonna pull out some miracles in these last two. It didn't work for Moon Knight. You know, I pretty much knew that wasn't going to pull out the miracles. That shit went out sad. I'm sorry. Now, yeah, in it, hindsight, it, it went out sad. It went fell out. flat they on the face. They fucking did Power Rangers at the end. They did a lot. They did Megazords at the end. But I also knew that it was to be a struggle for them to recoup with those last two episodes. So it wasn't, you know, I didn't have much to expect. This, I'm kind of feeling the same way. I'm hoping for the best, but expecting hot mess. I think that's a perfect wrap up to that. <laughs> then I mean, <laughs> yeah. What else did we see this week or last week? Uh, that was last week. Yeah, we got to see uh, Mission Impossible. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Semi colon no. colon Mission Impossible. The last Dead one Reckoning was... Part One. Dead Reckoning, right? Yeah. That, part that's... One. I and didn't that's... realize it was. A... And let me tell you, I didn't realize that I walked in that bitch that it was a Part One. I said. They cut, they chopped, they shouldn't oh, have. I, knew. They, I, knew. I didn't realize that, and I'm like, they really selling the work on us. Like, but I like the Mission Impossible series because love it's, it, and I like it. Tom Cruise's series because it it progressively recognizes how ridiculous and utterly over the top it is, similar to a Fast and Furious, and it leans into it and is self aware that it's fucking ridiculous. It hadn't been this bad. On the Fast and Furious scale until this one. No, this one was this one was, this was one, Fast and Furious light. I fully expected Vin Diesel to walk in at some point. Like this one was outrageousness. Like Fast and Furious light, and just I mean, just just to let y'all know, we might say a spoiler. So yeah, but there's not again. It's not there, a lot, but there's okay. Like the last one, I thought is one of my favorite movies of all time, and it has basically no plot. The plot is <laughs> there's some newts that get stolen. If Tom doesn't get him back, it's just set off something that'll destroy the world. Boom, let's go. Is that the one with Rami Malek? With Henry Cavill. No, see, now you're mixing him with Bond. That's oh, yeah, Rami that was Malek. Jesus yeah. Christ. All right. Yeah. No, um, the last with Henry Cavill and. Oh, with Superman. Okay. Yeah, with Superman. And it's one of my favorite action movies he had the mustache. ever. He had the mustache. He mm-hmm. had to pump up his arms with the guns when he, you know, <laughs> when he does the flex and a pocket appears on his shirt. Like, that is, it's one of my favorite films ever. It's just from beginning to end, damn near action. It's just dope. It doesn't need much. It, it, it was good as hell. I will This say one, that. I felt like had way too much plot and way too much because it was leaning into such ridiculousness. Like the one thing I got to call out is there's one thing in an airport where one of the villains is being masked by this AI. Like this AI is erasing it's, all it's the camera him. footage of him mm-hmm. as he goes along. And it's like the characters have to explain this because it's so ridiculous. And when you do stuff like that, when the dialogue, when characters are sitting there telling you what's happening on screen, instead of just showing you, but it's so utterly ridiculous that they have to say it so you somewhat believe it, <laughs> is when I'm like, I, you know, this is Fast and Furious. Because that's what they do in every Fast and Furious yeah. movie. And I didn't expect that from this. It was way too much of that for me. But yeah. when will, it got to it. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, when it got to it, I mean, it's fucking Mission Impossible. It's Tom Cruise, this director McGee. He did, he did, uh, you know, the last one, which is my favorite one. 
So this was I like mean, a different. He did. It's the yeah, same director. He, same director. Ooh, oh he, yeah. He, he might as well have been two people. I, two I thought. People. I mean, I, I thought the it was all was the, different this time. I, I, I thought the styles were the same. Style. I thought, yeah. And and okay, maybe I'm I'm thinking of the writing then. This the movie, writing is completely different. The writing different. was way different. Right, because like I say, this movie spent so much time explaining shit, but it has such a ridiculous premise that you had to explain it, and. Even though the, I just felt like they didn't need that ridiculous premise. Just give me the same thing. Nukes. Right. Something. You know, let's right, get to right, it. Right. I don't know. It's this AI shit. It was like, whatever, dog. Who cares? Right. The more you, I'm listening to you, and your first expression when you were yeah. like, even though the movie has been, it's it's been more so literally, you know, sh- sh- sorry to use the name in the explanation, but it has been impossible feats, right? Like yes. increasingly impossible feats, but still a good like thinking movie, I guess. Whereas this film, no, no, the last one. There's no thinking. thinking there's no thinking. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's, just, it's more thinking than it was in this, and I say that in the yes. sense of this felt way more Fast and Furious than the latter one. And it, it, I, and the thing is, it's not. And, the, and by that, I just mean like the characters know they're being fucking silly. That's it's yeah because it's not that it's thinking because the last one is like the I remember my boy was like yo there's no plot to this movie and okay. I was like. Fine, yeah, there, yeah. Uh, uh, no, there isn't. You know, no, you're I, I right. Tried, you're right. I tried you're to right. Maybe him. not think, think is the wrong yeah, word, but my point is a, the I characters yep. take still take themselves a little seriously in the last self aware. They, they're becoming now more they're very self aware that hey, I'm a I'm a I'm I'm halfway clowning in this shit. It's like once the fast. It's once again like when Fast and the Furious when Tyrese started realizing that they were kind of immortal. You know, once he started talking about it on screen. That's when it became like, I, right, you know, right, even, like, even okay, the characters I, are in on I, it. Like, y'all are in on it, right. And, and like, there, there's that reference we see in the commercial yeah. where he's like, they've gone rogue. And he's like, they always go rogue. Yeah, and they said it like three times. Yeah. But um, uh, it, it was that. And, yeah. And it's not necessarily a thing. It was just something I observed. And yeah. what I mostly observed, which is why I felt when I realized, oh, these, these characters know what the fuck's going on, was when, like, the first hell, the her first 30 minutes, they were speaking really weird. And when I say weird, I mean hushed tones and speaking at level two, but very seriously and very direct and focused. What do you mean, Jones? You mean this is the end of the world? We have a new coming on the subway, uh, on a submarine. Because there's so da, da, da. much exposition. Like, it was just like, why are you talking like that? Like, it was like, you know you're a cartoon character. And you are explaining to me as a viewer that you know that you are a cartoon character. That because- you know that I know that you are a cartoon character. It's because it's so much ridiculous exposition. So they're trying to do it in cool ways. Like, but, but it's like, and, you know, like, why? Like, you're wrong. not Batman, bro. Like, why yeah. are you speaking like that? And it was, it was like heavy handed, but then it was just like, oh, we, then, you know, then the next, the, the, the literally minute one after the first 30, it was like, ha ha, we know we're fucking clowns. We're going to keep it going. Like, I was like, okay. Like, I knew it. Like, I felt. I felt that. I, whatever, again, writing style completely different, but I had felt the break when it was like the person was like, I'm jumping off the page now. I'm She-Hulk. Like, I I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I was supposed to, the curtain was supposed to lift back for me like that, but maybe that was the intention. I don't fucking know. I don't and know. It didn't ruin anything, but I was just like, yeah. I felt weird. Like, do y'all know y'all sound stupid right now? Like, do y'all know y'all sound like you're, you're playing, but also taking yourself seriously, but playing about taking yourself seriously. It's like, well, that's why the, are we doing this game right now? Exposition is very hard to deliver, you know, and deliver okay. it well. And it's also when the exposition, when the plot that you're delivering is so ridiculous, like this one was, like this was, it was just one of the dumbest AIs, you know, you called it the chat GBT. It was so it was ridiculously. Chat, it was chat GBT gone rogue. It was so slow and so like, so the movie could happen type things. And, like I say, fuck all that. Because <laughs> once you get past that, once we get to these big ass set pieces, I mean, it was just it was pure joy for me as always. There's a car chase scene in Rome that is just fucking perfection. It's great. I thought uh, the addition of what's her name of Agent Carter, Haley Atwell, right? I liked her. I liked oh man, her. I love her. You know, I, I like, love her in this. Oof, I mean, I like you know, her in general, but I, I really yeah. loved her in this. She I fit. loved her in this. I, lo- I love her in general, but I thought she was, you know, amazing in this. That In that car chase scene, she, like, proved it because I felt it. Like, that was, it was, that's one of my favorite car chases. I love a good car chase, and that's going to go at the top of the list. 
And then there's this train sequence towards the end of the film the that is just fantastic. fucking. It's just incredible shit, you know. Like so, it delivered to me on what it needed to. It was. I felt like maybe there was just one more ill set piece or one ill villain because I think Henry Cavill really um, elevated the last one. This one. And also Shorty, who's more like an anti-hero. She elevated the last one. I like seeing her again, the blonde woman who's all mysterious, the arms dealer who makes the fixer, who makes everything happen. Uh, Palm. Palm Clemente. Palm Clemente, amazing in this one. I no, wish she slightly, had more. Mis- slightly mispronounced her last name, but yeah. Yeah, um, I wish she had more time. Mantis. And more, more, Mantis. I mean, amazing in this one as well. I wish she'd had more time. Yeah, she but was I, good. She was a good little Terminator. Yeah, and I think I think it was because the main villain who we're supposed to hate, I just didn't give a shit about that dude. So it that you mean the main have, villain that was from the first movie? But that no, he's set not off that set off time in the first fucking. But he place? didn't see Ethan. Set, he's not in that movie. That's all. Or the like, second movie, whatever. He no, set, I don't. Ethan, I don't think, as far as I know, that dude's never been in these movies before. Maybe not, but the point is they keep using that flashback. So he's yeah. pseudo in the movie, right? He's like, but he's the reason allegedly, Ethan got set the fuck off in the first the re- place. He's the reason that Ethan joins the MI yes. organization in the first place. That was never shown before, but now it's like we're supposed but, to care. But that's not the first time. This movie isn't the first time they've shown him. It was, I don't know which one they showed him before I, or the flashback of him, but they've shown him before. I've never, I didn't know that because I never cared about this girl. I cared about the woman who Ethan was with in the early movies who almost gets killed, who turns back up in the last one. Like, that's the girl, you know, for him. Let's talk about, quote, the girl. Let's talk about fridging, pseudo-fridging. Let's talk about if you are a woman in the Mission Impossible series and Tom Cruise even gives you so much as a wink, your ass is dead. It's tight. Your ass is good as dead, okay? But the one shorty survived. Barely. One, but yeah, she. Not, I mean, the one who's not in this movie, the one who he said, you know, get out of my life so you won't die, basically. Sure, and Haley for now. Like, oh, Haley gonna make it. Well, sure, because she's new. Yeah. yeah. Hunger, your hunger that you like. Which one? The one that came back. My point is, any woman is tight. That he even takes a shine to. You are fucking out of here. You're gone. You're done. You're Pluto. You're at the What's end. her name who couldn't cook chicken? Uh, what's that uh, black woman's name? Cook chicken. The woman who couldn't cook chicken. Um, cool. one used to be, the one, wasn't she married to uh, Robin Thicke? Um, <laughs> oh, God. Robin Thicke's wife? Um, um, oh, no. Because she was in one of these. She was in she one of these. Was. Yeah, and then they wrote her out of it. She didn't get killed. They just, like, wrote her ass. And I never understood that. Because they brought back everybody else from the Paula joints. Patton. Paula Patton. She needs to come back. She was dope in that joint. So she can get killed? No. Like, she can live. She's on the team. I mean, fucking, what's his name? And Them niggas have made it through every movie. Ving Rhames and um, that other nigga. Them niggas. niggas. Listen to what you just said. Them niggas. The men is making it through every movie. God damn it. The women is not. The women's is not making it. They literally replace his road dog with Haley Atwell. (laughs) And she's great. Don't get me wrong, but it was a literal replacement. It was a side by side, same seam replacement. I mean, with Shorty, it was a literal. N- not always Road Dog. She was trying to cap that nigga last movie too. So in a Road Dog kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> she was straight up trying to put in a friendship. In, face. In, a, in a in a spy versus spy friendship kind of way. I guess. <laughs> so um yeah, Mission Impossible. I you know if you liked any of the rest of them, you're gonna love this shit. You know like. Yeah, I, it was, I it was loved fun. it overall. It was yeah. fun, Ben. Like yeah. it, you loved it. Okay, overall, yes, I felt that it was fun. I, I was, it, it got me engaged the whole entire time. Yeah, I'm, I, I shared my, my criticism from a like, uh, you know, media professional standpoint, but as just a general viewer, I had fun. Yeah, no, as a Mission Impossible fanatic, I've, like I say, I've watched the last one. I can't tell you how many times I've watched that last film. It's like, if it's on, I'm going to watch it. I love it. So, and I've watched, I think, the third one with, um, I think it's the third one. The one with Philip Seymour Hoffman is another great one. The mm. first one is one of my favorites. The one right before the last one is pretty good, because that's the first one that McGee came on. And so yeah. he was just, you know, he was getting his rope <laughs> together. 
now I'm I'm thinking when you said when you said these other people, I'm thinking of the bad guys of each of these films. And I'm like, yep. yo, Gabriel is so like cartoonishly. I'm a bad guy, cartoonishly. Bad that's guy. the new. That's this guy. That's the new Gabriel. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's whack. He's he, such I mean, a cartoon. Philip, Philip Seymour Hoffman ruled. You know, I'm a, I'm a herder. I'm a herder. I'm a herder real bad. <laughs> Like I'm it was like, damn, okay, you are you have disturbed hurdle. my guy. Yeah, he was he was scary. Yeah. And then Henry Cavill was just such a maniac in the last <laughs> one that I just loved no, him. But but what we're talking about true maniacs, Tom Cruise is the maniac the of teen maniac of all. the of the century. Because yeah. I mean, still doing own stunts and stuff like that, but he's also like 99 years old and just going ham. Still running at full Tom Cruise speed, still doing the motorcycles and this and that. And, hey, power to the man. He 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 laughs in the face of death and danger. Good luck to you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, So check it out. You know, gives whatever, two thumbs up, all props. Not my favorite of the series, but in the top four, I'd say at this point. Yeah, top four, maybe top three. So solid as fuck. Top four. First one, the last one. Of all Mission Impossible. First one, yeah, top four. Yeah. Okay. First what one, the you, last then one. Then what do you what do you rate the original of Tom Cruise of you know? Mission Impossible? I rate yeah. um I rate Rogue, the last one, as my top one of them all. Then I rate probably uh Philip Seymour Hoffman, I'm gonna hurt her. And then the first one, and then this one. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, you see my And even in that comic, I'm a herder. I'm a herder. The women always <laughs> gets it. It is. I mean, but he says it so well. I'm a herder. No just... <laughs> country for any women. None. None. Because she almost dies in that one like twice, I think. I think Tom almost does too, though, right? I they both get that, that. They get that Absolutely bomb not. in the head thing. Like, that shit was ruthless. That, yeah, that's my man. Um... Go ahead. Yeah, no, you put that bomb in their head. No, I know. I'm, I was going to say that's, um, what's my, what's my girl, the Suicide Squad? That's, um, uh. <laughs> Amanda Waller. <laughs> that's some Amanda Waller shit, man. Yeah. I'm a herder. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. What else oh, we got, bro? Let's see. Um, the oh, the Emmys. Yeah. Um, talk about, you know, the ops <laughs> pulling one over on people's heads. Because today the Emmys were announced, and of course everyone's like, oh, yay! Well, and first of all, people. Yeah, first of all, all these award shows have always been bullshit. Like, when the Oscars was first created by this uh, film producer, his famous quote was like, if I make these shiny things and give them to the people, they'll agree to do whatever movie I want. You know, so it's always been, yeah, a way to, you know, make actors feel like they're worthy of something and then they'll do whatever movie, you know, these producers want or they'll yeah. agree to whatever terms these people want. And so when the Emmys are announced today, and sure, we're happy for all the black people. We're happy for all the shows we love, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, pay these fucking niggas. How you going to nominate a nigga for best writing and you ain't paying the nigga? And you're not paying him. It's the same. <laughs> like, it's the same, it's the same, same niggas. The award. It's the same it's guy. It's the same niggas, you, you know. Pay, or the same person or whatever. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And, I mean, just from a mechanic standpoint, as I kept going through the list of nominees, I kept seeing patterns, right? So you have. You like, always do. These leg, well, yeah, besides white people, but you see these legacy channels and things like that HBO Max, HBO Max, Netflix, AMC, Disney Plus, right? And then literally in like whole, like, like swaths of categories, it was like three shows. And mm. this is out of the multitudes of good shows that have been out there, right? Like, you know how many times Succession? You know how many times in the same category someone from Succession was nominated? And practice. I'm like, all of them? All like, of them and practice. again, I never seen Succession, Succession and, and I know it's been high entertaining for a lot of people. Not taking that away. But I'm just like, bro, all of the th three people took out of the six slots, all of these people, and you couldn't put in someone. And, 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 and shout out to Kirk, uh, Kirk Wrights um, on Twitter. He's a Hollywood writer. I, I share his sentiments. He was just like, you know, how are two shows dominating any one category when you consider things like, for example, J. Alphonse Nicholson in season two of P-Valley of, of The Murder. Like, these performances in these shows that are obviously being overlooked, 
rise to the occasion if you are going to take the Emmy seriously. Rise to the occasion of getting Emmys. Rise to the occasion of being nominated. So for none of that to happen, and you just see Succession three times and Better Call Saul for the thousandth time, I mean, I'm just like, damn. Data for, you know. I, 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 for I told Ben Dave, about that. Data for Data. For that Dave one episode that was about, and it was last two, two yeah. years ago. That episode just about Gator, that was phenomenal. I think that's why, I think it was too old. It's just time it is, is so weird old, right but, now. But, yeah. but I mean, if, even in this time, it wasn't It wasn't brought up. Mm. Well, Andor isn't that old. And even though Andor got nominated for some series and stuff, which I'm really happy to see. Uh, I felt like the Stars Guard is another one who got left off. The Father Stars Guard, you know, for actor. Alexander um, Skarsgård got, yeah. got, got a nomination for so section. Yeah. Well, his son did, right? Not, But the father did it for Andor. And then mm -hmm. Atlanta season three and four being left off is the most egregious thing I've ever seen. Like, I think those, I think Atlanta is just one of the greatest TV shows of all time. It should have constantly been nominated every time it was up for anything. I think every episode of season three and four were just such, they're like, like timeless, you know, just pushing the envelope forward type TV that we just don't get. So I just, and I think a lot of people didn't get it because of that, because it was so pushing the envelope forward. It was like when WandaVision first came on, people were like, what the hell is this? Until it like settled down into a normal show. Mm -hmm. And Atlanta never, never settled down into a normal show. And that's why I loved it so much. So, yeah. It's, it's sad. And I want to just, the, uh, the secondary part of Kirk's tweet he had mentioned, he said, because P-Valley, and I love P-Valley, right? Mm -hmm. and it's, a, it's a good series. P-Valley is. is a show Great. with a, because P-Valley is a show with a black ensemble and on stars, which is not considered yep. a prestige network, the series and those actors are ignored. This is not just a fault of voters, but critics and pundits as well. And I also, because I saw an email come in from, you know, the ops from Apple, and they were like, yo, we got 54 nominations or some shit, so they're pretty hype. You know, they're moving on up. And that Apple, money is moving. Apple has some of the best shows out that no one watches, straight up and down. Like right. Well, Apple did get a lot of uh, enough nominations. Like they have Ted Lasso got nominated, which is fantastic. Times. Um, Bad Sisters, that's on Apple TV. Ted What's Lasso, the, it's Ted Lasso on Apple. What's the Bad one about? Uh, with, oh, the uh, problem with John Stewart. That's also on Apple. TV. Shit, I didn't know about that one. The too. Super Bowl with Rihanna got nominated. Oh, it was incredible. But it was. Um, yeah. Still, the Michael J. Fox movie got nominated. That's Apple TV. What's the yeah. one that that show that I've never finished? Um, that was really good. I watched the pilot. Um, not seen. I'm uh, not seen. Sight or no? C C C C. Yeah, C. No. Uh, Chico Leo says that was great. No, it's the one about this dude at this job. It's super weird. It's super good. It's on Apple as well. Uh, I cannot remember the name of it. Oh well. Yeah. I know. I mean, I like I said, I'm happy. My my standouts, you, you mentioned the black people, but my standouts were Dominique Fishback. She got nomination for Swarm. Um, I also was very happy for Ayo Adibiri, um for The Bear. Um, and The Bear overall. I finished watching season two last week. So that phenomenal work. And just, I mean, everything about that show is, the way it shot, was shot this season in general. Oh my God, it was just absolutely gorgeous. And then like, writing very thoughtful writing and there are a lot of, and there's episodes that are written by black writers too so mm -hmm. you know yep yeah and i saw that i saw one of the writers talk about it i uh i've watched the bear peripherally and i know it's great it's so good ben yeah i just um like i say man J jamie lee curtis she did that i got well, to also say she did that this season bro she, you're gonna hear about this in the next yeah season. like i yeah like i say Andor and Atlanta not being on there like that. Well, Andor, well, Andor on there, was, but, is on there a few times. But it's, it's for drama. Yeah, I get it, and that's where it should be, you know. But we'll. I, I feel like that's just like one of them. I don't feel like the hype is behind that, you know, nomination. We'll I see. mean, my thing is, so Andor is in for best drama series, but they're also next to Better Call Saul, The Oof. Crown. Oof. House of the Dragon, Oof. The Last of Us, Oof. Succession. Yeah, that's what I mean. The White See, that's Lotus, what I mean. Yellow yeah. Jackets. Like, it's I'll, a wrap. And, and, and the words of that I mean is looking tight, fam. It's looking tight, fam. They, are, they also have one for best writing for a drama series. So you and what's it and, up against? Succession. It's, it's, Andor is up against... Um, oh, let me go back. My fault. Andor is up against Bad Sisters on Apple TV, Better Call Saul, twice, because it's episode. Uh... 
<laughs> Better Call Saul, and that's what I'm saying. Better Call comes up twice. Andor because, should have had because it's what, two so episodes that what, they're counting. What episode of Andor got nominated? It doesn't say the specific episode. It oh. just says who wrote it. Oh, okay. um, so, like for example, for Better Call Saul, it shows two different writers. So yeah. I know it's different episodes. Um, the uh, two two different entries. The Last of Us is another compet- competitor quote. Succession, yeah. and then The White Lotus. Yeah, it's losing. and then the last area, best directing for drama series. Yes, we have Andor, but once it's again, losing. Bad Sisters, The Last of Us, Succession. Succession comes up three times in this category because there's three different directors. The White Lotus. That's why I'm just like, and I and I know that these things are phenomenal. I'm not taking yeah. it away. It's like, aren't there other things that are also phenomenal? Andor and should... just like I say, I think it was as close to a perfect season of television that I've ever seen. It, yeah. you know, it was just, it's something else, you know, and I mean, it is not getting credited the way it should. Yeah. But once again, that goes back to another discussion I had with somebody else this week where I always said that, like, I don't give a shit about awards. I don't give a shit about sales because the greatest things that I've ever enjoyed are usually the things that are the least appreciated by the masses. I believe you. However, comma. Yep. If you were nominated and won an Emmy, are you going to also say you wouldn't find joy in that? <sighs> nominated or won one or I the want, other both? I want Hendrix, are you saying that I you're want, not going to find want, prestige I want in that? Hendrix to get nominated for everything. You know, Eisner I, or something like that, sure. Yeah, I think it deserves everything. At the same time, what I care about far more, I can say this straight, you know, because it's just like with this show. Is touching those people who are gonna reach out to me and be like, "Yo, I read this book, Ben, and okay. mm, it was this moment right here, nigga." You know that that will touch mm-hmm. me more than an award. Just fucking up. Who gives a so shit? So you're not seeking an award, but you're also. Not I know I wanted. If you get nominated, I, you're not gonna. Get I know I wanted to win all of those things because I know what those things, the prestige it'll bring to the book. It'll get more of that reaction that I want from people. You know, see what I'm saying? Like, because I want more people to read it. So the prestige of winning awards will get more people to read it. So there but, is prestige in awards. But what matters more is that reaction. It's just the, it's how the system is set up. I need awards. I need that type of stuff to get noticed. That's the same thing with all these mm. shows. So, but what matters to me more is the reaction I will get on a personal level mm. for people. Mm. You know, winning an award is like, eh, man, that's, you know, like all that shit is just part of the system. You know, that's like how it's set up to... You know, you got to get it. That would be great. You know, and I want it. I'm, I'm putting it out there for, you know, this book to win Mad Awards, New York Times bestseller, all that stuff. That's what I'm looking for. But what I'm really looking for is the moments, you know, I want people to get what I've been putting into this book, you know, and that's what I think all most creators, you know, they want people to, you know, like, oh, that shit hit me, fam. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. It's both is what I heard. Yeah, it's both. You know, it's both. But yeah, as far as I, you know, if I, once I, or once I do write some television and it gets nominated for an Emmy, yeah, I'd go up there. I don't know. I'd go up there and say some wild shit probably. I'm about to say, you going to wild out? I'd I'd probably go up there and say wild shit and never get nominated again. You know? He going to say, fuck Brody, he's a scrub. My career in Hollywood (laughs) has definitely been like, you know, it, it, it has been, you know, how not to, you know, get paid. How not to get paid in Hollywood. <laughs> and I don't care because I, my integrity matters way more than dollars, you know, to me. That's, it's just, you know, and I feel like there's so much of Hollywood, especially right now, is just distraction level television that I don't really want to participate in. That's fair. Yeah. I hear you, sir. Yeah. Um, what else we got going on? I mean, you mentioned it. Let's let's remind the listeners of what what we talked about. Hendrix, man, remind. Oh them. yes, yeah, definitely. Because I saw my man uh, Tom Mandrake uh, shining it out again this week. So yes, uh, my first ever graphic novel. Who, uh, Jimi Hendrix is Jimi Hendrix Purple Haze is coming from Titan Comics, November seventh. I had a bit pause right there because. I always shout out me and Mellow Brown. We are two of the writers. I mean, we are the two writers of Jimmy and Just Purple Haze. The graphic novel available from Titan Comics November 7th, you can pre-order it now, is illustrated by Tom Mandrake, a motherfucking legend. But this week, I also want to shout out Justin, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, 
because I haven't gotten to speak to you yet. Justin Prokovic, 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 Prokovic. I'm going to go Prokovic. Okay. Justin Prokovic, <laughs> who is the colorist of Jimi Hendrix's Purple Haze, and he is currently doing the colors on it. I've seen some pages. They're fantastic. I mean, it's just, this is some beautiful shit, man. Like, I, you know, we talked about it. You can go listen to Tatiana interviewing me about it. Just go pre-order Jimi Hendrix's Purple Haze right now. Go to your local comic book shop, your local bookstore, or hit up Amazon wherever if you have to. Tell them you want Jimi Hendrix's Purple Haze. It's a work of love, man. Like, you know, just it. I'm so I say this again and again, but I'm just so proud of this book. Every time I think about it, the ending, the whole story that we've told. Um, I actually got interviewed on Cal's podcast, the Black Wrestling podcast last week. And they were at, they asked me, I think we talked about this, but they asked me, would I like to tell more stories in this universe? And I'm like, fam, it's set up to tell more stories in this universe. Like, I told the whole story arc to Young Guru when I finished the whole story arc. And I just sat there and explained to him, you know, the whole story. And he was like, all right, that's cool. But, you know, the story is not over yet, right? And I was like, yeah, I know. But, you know, this, it's the, this book is done. You know, this novel is finished. And then there will be more novels in this series later on, hopefully, if y'all go out and pre-order it and all that good stuff. But yeah, there's, it's set up for more stories. Like, there's just, there's so much packed into this graphic novel, man. There's this whole universe that me and Mello created with our writing and that Tom and Justin and everyone else are illustrating. So it's this universe. And that's another thing I mentioned, like Tom's art, it's like, it's the type of art that as a kid, I would look at a page of art like this and I would just want to tell stories about everyone on the page. So, yeah, there's a million more stories I could tell from this book. So, God willing, you know, people pre-order it, people love it, and people read it and buy it and tell their friends about it and tell a friend and et cetera. And we get those sales where Titan wants to do more in this universe and, you know, we'll be back for more because I would love to keep telling stories in this. And I think people... Once they get their hands on it, we'll want to read more stories in this universe. So, yeah. I, for one, am rooting for you. <laughs> Thank so, you very much. To say the least, I'm very excited. So, yeah. You said November 19th? November 7th. 7th, Election excuse day. me. Why, why does it get 19th? Oh, I'm thinking October 19th. That's why. Oh, uh, yeah, because and that's, then all that's the not even why. Is it the 19th or 17th? I'm getting my days mixed up. I think it's the 19th. It's the 19th. October 19th, we are going to be at the National Museum of African American History and Culture the at 19th. the Oprah Winfrey Museum. Ben, I mean no, myself. Oprah Winfrey Theater. Theater, the, excuse me. I said the museum. The yep. theater. Theater. Or from the South, the theater. Uh, we're going to be there. I've always loved that pronunciation. But Theater. I guess theater. we did say that in Houston. Yeah, we do. Yeah. That oh sounds my gosh. right. Theater. So, very yeah. down South. Uh, yeah. Ourselves and some other prestigious black folks will be there talking all things Afrofuturism um, and topics around that space. Uh, we were told that it is free to attend. Mm -hmm. I think you may have to register. So for those who have been asking us, we do have confirmation it is free. Um, I think it is going to be a sign-up situation. And, you know, more than likely is you have to get there at a certain time or you may not have a seat. Yeah. So, um, but, but there's that. <laughs> but... Uh, very excited about that. Very humbled. Very honored. Something that we had been, you know, this is a, what a, over a year in the making at this point. Yeah, right. It's been a long time, right? And then we couldn't even talk about it for like eight months. So it's just um, like with Hendrix. Like people are asking yeah. me how long they asked me that on the podcast. How long? And I had to realize that it's been about when it comes out. It will be over a little over two years since Mello first came yeah. to me. Like, yo, do you want to pitch yeah. this? And much like creative processes much like movies films tv like a lot of stuff has been in the works for years and by the time it comes out it's like yo i've been did this right ben so, did this man um, like yeah but point being is we are gonna be live out chair during howard homecoming week um mm. and i will be staying there for the weekend oh of course we really hope that everyone who is in DMV area or going to be visiting or whatever will come through. I know I'm going to have family there. I'm going to have friends come through. And, you know, a lot of people have shown their interest. So, yes, as, as soon as it's available and up like on, was it July right now? As soon as it's up on a site and available, we'll let you guys know. But you should also just watch it. And by the site, I mean the, the, the African American Museum site. 
Mm-hmm. Just check that to see their upcoming events because I think they had stopped in like September, like stopped listing things up until a certain time in September. So just keep watching that because I'm sure they're going to update it soon. Man, it's so crazy. I cannot believe we're doing this. Yeah, man. It's, it's, listen, we professional. So <laughs> that's what you do as a professional now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and as we said earlier on in the ep- this episode, we're going to be doing more things, just different ways of capturing attention and imagination when it comes to covering the fandom, covering nerd stuff, geek stuff, pop culture stuff. We're, we're going to be going, doing things differently. And, and, and again, we, we want to still, we want to entertain and we want to be there for y'all and we want to combine both of them so that we also don't lose our minds. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't want to be in a, and stuck in one place either. So. And also, uh, recently, we just realized, like, shout outs to Cam and Mace, you know, and what they're doing over there with the It, it Is What It Is podcast. But, like, they were just talking their shit this week. And so, real quick, I'm just going to talk a little shit. Like, ain't no, like we said earlier in the episode, ain't nobody really doing it out here like me and Tatiana. You know, it's just we have birthed and fathered and mothered we so have many. sons. And daughters and granddaughters and grandchildren <laughs> have, and grandsons. Sons and grandchildren. And, Maybe going on greats. We yeah, and this goes back children. to the Combat Jet show. Rest in peace to my brother Reggie Osei and happy Combat Jet Day to everyone out there. But yeah, we've been doing this and we just sometimes have to stop and take a second and be like, okay, no, fuck that. We got to remind these people <laughs> who has been doing this. And so I'm speaking to y'all out there. Ben you know, said, we coming back for the block. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, because there's Tell been a lot be of back. people. Tell them what you say. Tell them what's the space is coming back. What he said in the wire. Tell him he back. Yeah, tell him Omar coming, baby. Tell you know Omar what I mean? Because it's like, <laughs> like I'm like I'm. I've been seeing a lot. I've been hearing a lot. There's been a lot of little slit talk lately that I've been like, oh okay. And then I've just also been really the credibility of a lot of these people out here is at question. I will say that because a lot I'm of people shaky. will do anything for a check. You know, I talked about it when it comes to writers in Hollywood, which is a lot of my problem with them. And, you know, shout outs to the ones who don't watch Hollywood Shuffle. There's always work at the post office. And it goes to the same thing to all these bloggers, all these videographers, whatever you want to call them. All these people who are especially moving in this blurred space lately. I've seen a mm. lot of people just doing shit for checks. You know what I mean? I, just I, saying shout whatever. To, shout out to Luna. I hope you put the ether beat on. Yeah, you, saying please. whatever for these checks, fam. And it's like, you can't be doing that, y'all. You know, like. May says on it is what it is. They come to me for the truth. You know what I mean? I have sacrificed jobs in Hollywood, you know, to talk this shit, you know, because I'm not going to sit here and just say that some bullshit is not some bullshit. I'm going to do it in a, you know, eloquent manner. And I'm going to break it down to the very last compound. But (laughs) I'm going to call what it is. What's up, Internets and the Fan Fam? This is Tatiana King for For All Nerds, and I want to thank you so much for listening and watching to For All Nerds. Make sure you like and subscribe to us only on YouTube.